Calimera Cyprus. Few months ago, I was invited by TEDx Nicosia to talk about clowning education. Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay f calm! Wait, 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 wait! Everybody just calm down! You probably are saying, what the hell is TEDx? TEDx stands for Technology, Entertainment and Design. I'm not going to speak anymore. I'm going to take you straight to the video. And remember, like, share and subscribe. There was light. So I, was, I decided to put the hat on, but then I realized it's very hot. So I'm trying to find a way or a place that I can put it there. The only place I was thinking is until I'm done. So uh, we need to clear some things up before we start. My name is not Mohammed as the Greeks call me. My name is not Mohammed, as the English call me. I am an Arab, so they call me Muhammad. For you, I bet some of you are now clearing their throats and they're trying to say the name Muhammad, Muhammad. I'll give you a little trick. All that you need is to pretend that you are vomiting. So once you say my name, you could just go man, man, and it will work. Try it, but don't do it here. So why am I here? Okay. Uh, first, let me uh, introduce what I do. Basically, I'm a drama educator. What is drama education? It's a teacher who goes to schools and teach children how to do theater. And it happens to be that I am a clown. Though I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not like really trying to have attention, but I am in a way. A few weeks ago, I received a call from my friend Paul of TEDx Nicosia. He rang the phone and uh, he said, Mr. Muhammad, uh, what do you think if you could come and talk at the TEDx Nicosia? I said, uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Finally, somebody wants to hear me. Uh, yes, Mr. Paul, I will be honored. <laughs> what would you like me to talk about? He said, Muhammad, what do you think of an idea that is worth spreading? I said, Hold on a second. <laughs> well, I have lots of ideas, but actually I can give you one that I thought of at this moment, is how can we make education funny? And Paul asked me, how do you think we can make education funny? And I said, simply, by trying to connect with the child inside us. Hello? <laughs> Hello there. And here I am. So, uh, today I'm going to try to inspire you about the importance of drama in the lives of children. But first things, I would like to tell you a story about a clown. It's not going to take more than three hours, so <laughs> relax. There was a young clown. It happened to, uh, to be a young boy. It happened to be his name, Muhammad. He was 12 years old. He woke up one day and he said, you know, I am a funny boy, and I think I can really make others laugh. And maybe one day I can make it as a career. So he goes to his mother, she was sitting in the kitchen. She was preparing uh, a famous Palestinian dish. It's called mahshi. 
what is mahshi? Mahshi is a kind of a zucchini, and according to the Palestinian tradition, you stuff it with rice, uh, lamb, and oriental spices. And when you eat it, you, your creativity totally dies, because you're just totally full. Anyway, this creative moment, he goes to his mother and he says, Mama, I know what I'm going to be. I'm going to be a funny man when I grow up. The mother answers and she says, Habibi, you are already a funny boy. <laughs> but Mama, you don't understand. I want to be a clown. <laughs> the mother was, Habibi, to your room. <laughs> and that was the end of the story. This little Muhammad grew up. He became a teenage. He went to school. He had some troubles, just like many teenage of these days. He used to be bullied by the students who were elder than him. He was beaten. He was called names. He, he looked so softy, and he wanted to be a clown. And everybody used to make fun of him. How could you be funny? This guy grew up and he went to the university. And this fear of becoming funny and a clown started hiding. But actually, this stressed him even more. He thought a lot. Uh, at one time, like many other teenagers who were bullied, he thought of killing himself. Thank God he was not courageous enough to do it. But he was not happy. He wanted to be happy, but he was not. Until one day, he was introduced to theater. And this is where it was his first audition, and he got a small role in a play, and he went there. He fell in love with performing, because at that moment, he felt that there is attention to him. He wanted to share something, and people saw him. Then he said, I'm going to pursue this dream. And he went after it, and he studied theater in the university. His expectation of theater was totally different. He thought, like, it's a place where I will be standing on stage, where people will look at me, and at the end of the show, everybody will say, Bravo, that's a good actor. But what he learned was something different. The Greeks are the ones who created drama. And what we mean by drama is the doing and the action. And actually, the first drama experiences that happened, happened in temples in Greece. And the purpose of these performances was not to entertain audience. It was a way to connect to gods. It was some kind of a ritual, prayer, to connect with the supreme powers up there. The audience who were sitting, their job were not to be entertained. They were part of this relation. And the priests or the performance were trying to create this connection between them and the audience and them and this supreme power. So you can imagine it's some kind of a triangle relation. It was for a purpose, to try to connect and understand a relation. Years passed and years passed, and now we are in the 21st century. We are in the 21st century, aren't we? I think we are. Comes a famous uh, director, he's Brazilian, he, was, he passed away a few years ago. His name is Augusto Boal. Augusto Boal created a type of theater called Theater of the Oppressed. Augusto Boal says, it's true, theater is not about an actor standing, performing, and trying to impress the audience. It's a relation between the actors and a relation between them and the audience. And at a certain point, Augusto Boal said, actually, the audience can be actors. So whatever production he will make, he never finishes it. He always asks the audience to come on stage 
and finish the story. And this is how he believed theater is about. It's about trying to create the change. It's not what I think, it's what we all together, actors and audience, think together how the story on stage could end. Because at the end, we all believe that theater is a mirror of life. And the only people who can answer is not the actors or the director, it's the audience. He says all the time, everybody can be an actor, even the actors. God bless his soul. So, one last thing he says, in theater, all that you do is just a game. It's a play. And that's why we say, I want to go and watch a play, because people on stage are playing. At this moment, it hit me. I always wanted to play, and I wanted to be a clown. And now I'm an actor, so I can be a clown. I took the hat, put the red nose, and I became the clown that I am today. What is a clown? A clown is a fictional character who acts a comedy to entertain people. He creates fictional characters, fictional situations, and fictional conflicts. And what he does when he's with the little children, for example, he brings a newspaper and he tells the children, what is this? And they all see it as a newspaper. Later, it starts raining. Therefore, this newspaper will be turned into an umbrella. And he can run away. When the rain is over, he shakes the newspaper. He looks down. He sees that his shoes are dirty. He puts it down. And the umbrella turns to be a rug. And he wipes his shoes. And then he looks to discover that the rug is ruined. What could he do? He thinks. And he turns the newspaper into a bowl ball that the clown can juggle with. And he starts. Just kidding, I don't know how to juggle. <laughs> so, what did this clown learn from this? What he did is just a simple drama game that you play with the children in the school. What this clown learned is that you can use anything, any object, and transform it into a new object. A newspaper that can be an umbrella that can turn into a rug and that can turn at the end into a ball. Isn't this creativity? What is creativity? It's when you take something that is original and you transform it into another original idea using your imagination. The second thing that you could learn that your imagination has no limits when it comes to a newspaper or when it comes to a rocket that will go to this place. Imagination has no limits. The third thing is always look positive to the things. You can simply turn a dirty rug that, has, that really looks bad and turn it into a juggling ball where you can really enjoy playing with. Isn't this what we really want to teach our children? How to see negative things in a positive ways? One last thing, and I have four minutes I have to finish. What does a clown teach us? He teaches us how to deal with our conflicts. And now, since I have the four minutes, I'm gonna try to wrap the final story up. I remember one day I decided to be a clown. I went to a school, there were lots of kids. And I said, today I'm going to divide you into two groups. This group, we're going to call you the pink children. 
and this group we're going to call you the green children. The pink children are like normal, like everyday ch children, blonde, uh, dark hair, black, whatever. You look just fine. You're going to play, you're going to have fun in your group. Then I go to the next group and I say, this group, you're going to be the clowns. So we're going to put red noses, we're going to put the makeup on you, and you're going to be as much funny as possible. And Muhammad, stop picking your nose up, okay? Then we told them, one day, the pink children lost their way, and they found themselves on the land of the green children. The green children bullied them, and they attacked them, and they called them names. But we need to solve this conflict, don't we? So let's make a party. This group is going to gather with this group, and you're going to make a party in which everybody's going to say poetry, you're going to dance hip-hop, you're going to be making songs, traditional songs, and Muhammad, again, stop picking your nose up. So the children said, no, this is not what we're going to do. Since we are the, the pink children, we are the one who will take control. And this is what we will do. We'll create a battle between the two groups. And each group is going to form some kind of karate kid, a kung fu style combat. We had to accept. We stepped back, and the children created their own theater scenes in which they battled together. They created the most hilarious scenes ever. Kung Fu picking noses, hitting each other in the balls, whatever. It was really fun. And at the end, we were watching. What was special about these things, I can see my eyes on the time, it's two minutes, is that every scene that ended, one character at least died. We had the time to sit down, we sat back, we took a look, and we talked about it, and we said, what has happened? They said, we were just having fun. But the result was, that what you see is that somebody died. After a little thought, the little children said, Irios, can we have the party again? And I asked them, can we really have the party after this happened? So you see, it can be funny, but at the same time, it can make you think when you put theater in your life. What you see is, this is the result of the decisions that we make. You might laugh at it, you might cry with it, but at the end, Theater opens the door for the young children to see the result of their decision. And it's up to them at the end to have a party or not. Thank you very much.